Chapter 16 Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses, with certain of the children of Israel, two hundred fifty princes of the congregation, called to the assembly, men of renown. And they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said to them, You take too much on you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then lift yourselves up above the assembly of the Lord? When Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he spoke to Korah and to all his company, saying, In the morning the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near to him. Even him whom he shall choose he will cause to come near to him. This do, take censers, Korah, and all your company, and put fire in them, and put incense on them, before the Lord to-morrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. You take too much on you, you sons of Levi. Moses said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi, it seems but a small thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tent of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them, and that he has brought you near, and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you, and you seek the priesthood also. Therefore you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord and Aaron. What is he that you should murmur against him? Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, We won't come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, and that you must also make yourself a prince over us? Moreover, you haven't brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We won't come up. Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, don't respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Moses said to Korah, You and all your company go before the Lord, you and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put incense on them, and bring them before the Lord, every man his censer, two hundred fifty censers, you also and Aaron each his censer. They took every man his censer and put fire in them, and laid incense on them and stood at the door of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. Korah assembled all the congregation against them to the door of the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. They fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be angry with all the congregation? The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the congregation and say, Get away from around the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got them up from the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood at the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little ones. Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hasn't sent me. But if the Lord makes a new thing, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that pertains to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall understand that these men have despised the Lord. It happened, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground split apart that was under them, and that the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men who pertained to Korah, and all their goods. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed on them, and they perished from among the assembly. All Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up. Fire came forth from the Lord, and devoured the two hundred fifty men who offered the incense. 
The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter the fire yonder, for they are holy, even the censers of these sinners against their own lives, and let them be made beaten plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are holy, and they shall be assigned to the children of Israel. Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, which those who were burnt had offered, and they beat them out for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial to the children of Israel, to the end that no stranger, who isn't of the seed of Aaron, comes near to burn incense before the Lord, that he not be as Korah, and as his company, as the Lord spoke to him by Moses. But on the next day, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. It happened, when the congregation was assembled against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tent of meeting, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Get away from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. They fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer, and put fire on it from off the altar, and lay incense on it, and carry it quickly to the congregation, and make atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague has begun. Aaron took as Moses spoke, and ran into the midst of the assembly, and behold, the plague had begun among the people, and he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stopped. Now those who died by the plague were fourteen thousand seven hundred, besides those who died about the matter of Korah. Aaron returned to Moses to the door of the tent of meeting, and the plague was stopped. Psalm 52 For the Chief Musician A Contemplation by David When Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul, David has come to Abimelech's house. Why do you boast of mischief, mighty man? God's loving kindness endures continually. Your tongue plots destruction, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking the truth. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God will likewise destroy you forever. He will take you up and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous also will see it in fear and laugh at him, saying, Behold, this is the man who didn't make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in God's house. I trust in God's loving kindness forever and ever. I will give you thanks forever because you have done it. I will hope in your name for it is good in the presence of your saints. Psalm 53 For the Chief Musician To the Tune of Mahalath A Contemplation by David The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. Every one of them has gone back. They have become filthy together. There is no one who does good, no, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and don't call on God? There they were in great fear, where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame, because God has rejected them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion, when God brings back the captivity of his people. Then Jacob shall rejoice, Israel shall be glad. Psalm 
Psalm 54 For the chief musician on stringed instruments A contemplation by David When the Ziphites came and said to Saul Isn't David hiding himself among us? Save me, God, by your name Vindicate me in your might Hear my prayer, God, listen to the words of my mouth For strangers have risen up against me Violent men have sought after my soul They haven't set God before them Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the one who sustains my soul. He will repay the evil to my enemies. Destroy them in your truth. With a free will offering I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, Yahweh, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble. My eye has seen triumph over my enemies. Chapter 6 In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above Him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two He covered His face. With two He covered His feet. With two He flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. The foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, You hear indeed, but don't understand, and you see indeed, but don't perceive. Make the heart of this people fat, Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn again and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? He answered, Until cities are waste without inhabitant and houses without man, and the land becomes utterly waste, and the Lord has removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. If there are yet a tenth in it, it also shall be in turn eaten up, as a terebinth and as an oak whose stock remains when they are felled, so the holy seed is its stock. Let brotherly love continue. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for in doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in bonds, as bound with them, and those who are ill-treated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the bed be undefiled, but God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Be free from the love of money, content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will in no way leave you, neither will I in any way forsake you, so that with good courage we say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, men who spoke to you the word of God, and considering the results of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be carried away by various and strange teachings, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not by food, through which those who were so occupied were not benefited. We have an altar from which those who serve the holy tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals, whose blood is brought into the holy place by the high priest as an offering for sin, are burned outside of the camp. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside of the gate. 
let us therefore go forth to him outside of the camp, bearing his reproach. For we don't have here an enduring city, but we seek that which is to come. Through him, then, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of lips which make confession to his name. But don't forget to be doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they watch on behalf of your souls as those who will give account, that they may do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are persuaded that we have a good conscience, desiring to live honorably in all things. I strongly urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. Now may the God of peace, who bought again from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep with the blood of an eternal covenant, our Lord Jesus, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. But I exhort you, brothers, endure the word of exhortation, for I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been freed, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Greet all of your leaders and all the saints. The Italians greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen.